Hi, I'm Johnny from UltimatePaperMache.com and this is the second video in this series. I'm showing you how to use my pattern to make a paper mache wolf mask. In the last video, I showed you how to cut out the pattern on cardboard and tape it all together so that it has all the right shapes. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I put the paper mache on it. I used boiled paper mache paste this time. And a lot of people do use that particular recipe all the time. I'm going to put a link to it down below so that you can see it. I don't usually use this particular recipe. It's a little bit more work. I don't like the way it feels on my hands. And it isn't any stronger than the raw flour and water paste. That's what I almost always use when I'm using paper strips and paste. But it was easier to show you where I was putting the, the uh, strips in the video because the, the cooked paste is clear and the raw flour and water paste isn't. That's the only reason that I used it for this video. Now you can also use uh, paper mache clay if you want to. I'm going to put a link down below to my video on the Egyptian blue hippo because I altered my paper mache clay recipe just a little bit for that project to make it really easy to smooth on a really, really thin layer of the paper mache clay. So let's get right to it. I'm going to show you how to put the paper mache on the paper mache wolf mask. I'm going to get rid of those cut edges on my paper. Just throw them out. Because those cut edges make ridges on paper mache. You want to get rid of those. And so now I'm going to pull it the way it actually likes to tear. And I'm just going to make a whole lot of little pieces. And start out with the skinny ones because those will go around the eyes, around the ears, all the way around the edges and on the nose. So we need little skinny ones. And then we need nice fat ones for the rest. Well, maybe like an inch. You don't want to get too carried away. Now if you saw my previous video, you know that I used hot glue to put the eyebrows and the nose on the mask. But I want to use the hair dryer to speed up the drying time. So even though I want to really cover the back of the mask first, I have to capture that hot glue that's right underneath those eyebrows and the nose because otherwise the hair dryer could melt it and it could end up uh, making a real mess and then I'll be able to turn it over and actually finish the back. But it's really important to not put on too much paste because you want to dry paper mache as quickly as possible. It's really easy to put on way too much paste and and then it takes forever to dry. Now you remember that I put a piece of tape over that edge of the nose and see how nice and smooth that line is? That worked out really well. I'm going to use the end of my brush here to make sure that the paper mache goes into those nostrils because cutting out that nose was a lot of work and I don't want to lose it. This is actually the hardest part of putting the paper mache on just because, I mean it's not hard, but I'm using really tiny pieces. For everything else it actually will go quite quickly. I'm just going back over it to make sure everything is stuck on really tight and smooth. Now I'm just going to go hit these with a the hairdryer so that I can turn it back over without uh, messing up my eyebrows and my nose when the backside is up against the table. Now before I started putting the paper mache on here, I did one more thing. I pressed out right on the end of my muzzle to get that nice curve kind of goes in here and goes out there. That's the bulge that goes around their canine teeth and there's always just a little bit wider on that end of the muzzle. You don't need to do that if you like a, a more angular look. That's kind of in this year. I'm just going to use the biggest pieces I can and I'm going to use as little paste as possible and cover this whole inside of the mask. You don't really need to cover the inside of the mask if you don't want to. I just like doing it because it makes it look a little nicer and because it covers up the tape. Eventually, any kind of tape is going to just pretty much come apart with age and the paper mache could actually last a hundred years if you take care of it and, and keep it dry. So now the inside is dry. 
But before you put any more paper mache on the outside, you want to make sure that it fits if you intend to actually wear this as a mask. I'm going to put mine on the wall, so it doesn't really matter to me what size it is. But I did try it on, and it's a little bit too narrow. So what you want to do is find a bowl that's just big enough so that if you push down a little bit, if you can see that, it made the mass just a little bit wider. And that's all I would need in order to actually have it fit. I wouldn't want to push it all the way down because that would make it spread out way too much. So go ahead and try it on. Find a bowl if you need to. And then put that bowl aside. You're not going to need it right now, but you will need it as soon as the rest of the paper mache goes on your mask. I'm going to do the bigger parts first, and then I'm going to go back and do the parts that require really tiny pieces. If you get a wrinkle in it, fix it now. It'll be a lot easier than going back and fixing it later. I'm just going to soften up that corner where the two pieces were taped together. It's just a little bit too sharp for me. If you like the sharp lines, uh, don't feel obligated to get rid of them just because I am. I just wanted to soften up that line just a little bit. I'd already done it on that side. Now I still only have two layers of paper mache, but I've got about six layers of paper right over that edge. I'm just softening up this line here, just so that it is a little bit more gradual. The ear kind of wants to uncurl, so you want to be real careful to add probably uh, two layers of paper mache all the way around that connection point between the ear and the head. Some of the pieces you use across that seam are going to need to be fairly narrow because otherwise they'll wrinkle when you try to make them stretch around the two different uh, curves. Some areas have changes in the plane where you have basically the shapes underneath the paper mache are going to go in three different directions. But what you can do is just take a larger piece and tear a little bit of it like I'm doing here and then you'll be able to press it down and then it'll end up being nice and smooth. Now I'm going to use another wide piece. Uh, it'll curve very nicely around the inside of the ear and then I tore it in half as you can see so that I can make it uh, smooth over the head without causing a wrinkle to show up in the middle where it curves in a different direction. Now most of the front is covered with the paper mache. It's wet and I need to dry it off before I can do the small pieces that go around the edges. I, I have to have something dry to hold on to while I'm putting those tiny little pieces all the way around at the edge of the mask. So I'll get out my bowl again. I'll press my mask over it just a little bit so that it turns into the right size for me to wear if I happen to want to wear it and I'll let it dry that way. I'll go ahead and hit it with the hair dryer again to speed up my uh, drying time. So now everything is dry enough for me to hold and I just need to use small pieces to go all the way around the edge. Now in some places you can actually use slightly larger pieces around the edge, but as soon as it starts to curve, then you end up with a wrinkle on the other side if you use a piece that's too big. That's really important to pay attention to when you're doing the ears because you've got a really strong curve, especially right at the top, and you have to use really tiny pieces or basically you'd end up with a whole bunch of wrinkles. So be really patient and use small pieces and go around the whole entire outside of your mask. So now the paper mache is all done, I just need to let it dry again. That's always the hard part is waiting because I'm really excited about getting to the actual painting of this wolf. I can't wait, but I have to because it has to 
get dry totally all the way through before I put any paint on it. In the next video, I'm going to show you how I painted my paper mache wolf mask. There's a whole lot of ways to do it. I'm just going to show you one of them. And also, if you would like to make your own wolf mask, you can use my pattern. You can find it on my website at ultimatepapermache.com. Just click on the little link at the top for patterns. You find a whole lot of other patterns out there too, but the wolf is going to be there right at the top. And if you happen to be watching this on YouTube, be sure to subscribe to my channel and click the little bell dilly so that they'll tell you when the next video comes out. And then come back and visit me at ultimatepapermache.com. I'd love to see you there.